Welcome to a satanic horror with plenty of pulse-raising moments and startling imagery made by a filmmaker who was best known for his musicals. This is Angel Heart, the tale of a mysterious disappearance, repressed memory, and voodoo. The film begins in the New York City of the 1950s, where an investigator by the name of Harry Angel is invited by a mysterious figure to investigate the disappearance of a professional singer called Johnny Favorite. That mysterious figure is Louis Cipher, and he is played by none other than Robert De Niro. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Angel. Cipher asks Mickey Rourke's Angel to find Favorite, but his reasons for doing so are necessarily vague and unspecified. Does this man owe you money or something? Not quite. I gave Johnny some help at the beginning of his career. So were you his, like, uh, his, his agent? No, no, no. Monsieur Cipher has a contract. Certain collateral was involved to be forfeited in the event of his death. Angel is left unsure of Cypher's intentions if he should find favorite, but he can't resist the temptation of the lucrative deal for the job, and he signs on the dotted line. The film is based on the novel Falling Angel by William Hjortsberg. He would craft a screenplay that would be linked to influential actors of the time, including Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman. But he found that, even with their names attached, Hollywood studios simply weren't interested in funding the film. The whole project was dead in the water until British filmmaker Alan Parker got involved. Parker had a long list of successful films behind him, including Bugsy Malone, Midnight Express, Fame, and Pink Floyd, The Wall. Like fellow British filmmakers of the time, such as Ridley Scott, Parker had been trained in the world of TV commercials, and the cinematic feel that he gave them didn't go unnoticed by the movie industry. Your hair can sometimes let you down. Not tonight, Josephine. With Hjortsberg's blessing, Parker wrote his own screenplay and made fundamental changes, including toning down the character of Louis Cipher, resetting the location to the voodoo hotbed of New Orleans, and even changing the novel's outcome and the identity of the killer. Robert De Niro had originally been sought to play the role of Harry Angel, but he expressed an interest in playing Louis Cipher instead. That left Parker trying to lure a disinterested Jack Nicholson to the role of Angel, before settling for the more enthusiastic Mickey Rourke. The role of Epiphany Proudfoot would go to Lisa Bonet, an actress that Parker had never even heard of before she auditioned, and a star of a popular TV show that he'd never seen, The Cosby Show. And it was Mickey Rourke himself who would suggest Charlotte Rampling for the role of Madame Cruzmark, a role that Parker had held multiple auditions for without success. One of Parker's biggest problems was trying to curb the egos of his two main actors, the established superstar that was Robert De Niro and the then rising star of Mickey Rourke. Both were trying to outdo one another. It was not, I always thought at the time, it was not so much two actors, it was like two prize fighters, you know, two boxers. And they were like surrounding one another until um, they, they both become comfortable and Mickey in his hand had two ice cubes that he was crushing like that during the entire scene. I don't know why, but that's what he had in his hands. He was in awe of De Niro and he, he wanted to show him that he was as good and then when we did the final scenes which is the end of the film Mickey had got more confident and he used to say to me before the take he said I'm going to show that I won't say the word but uh, he said that you know because uh, Mickey thought of himself as his equal. Harry Angel's search for Johnny Favorite leads him to New Orleans in the cloying heat of summer. We don't go around murdering people all right Mr. Angel what about your Johnny Favorite? Oh, so now uh, you remember him after all, huh? Parker's intention was to use this location symbolically as a kind of hell, getting hotter and hotter right up to the climax. The investigation involves the questioning of many interesting and diverse characters as Angel tries to unravel the mystery surrounding Favourite's disappearance, all of which is set to the unnerving backdrop of voodoo and Hollywood's notion of its rights, practices and charms. <laughs> Angel Heart performed poorly at the box office, but it certainly worked its dark magic on me. It chilled me to the bone several times, both directly and subconsciously. I recommend it to anyone who's interested in horror with a spiritual dimension. You've been watching episode four of a series on satanic horrors, which includes The Devil Rides Out, The Omen, The Exorcist, and Sleepy Hollow.